Hi, I'm Susan Brown and welcome to Bridging the Capital Access Gap. In this module, I'd like to talk to you a bit about the difference between being loan ready and not qualified for a loan. We're going to talk about what loan ready means and how that's different from not qualifying and why it's important to know the difference. What I think many of the modules that you've probably seen so far have demonstrated is that qualifying for a loan can set a very high bar for the people we want to serve. And there are cases where a client is ready to borrow and could successfully use a loan, but doesn't qualify for a loan. So for example, the credit score, which many lenders rely on quite heavily, does not really predict the successful repayment of a loan the way you might think. This is a quote from a document that's in the handouts for this module called Alternative Data and the Unbanked by Oliver Wyman. And it says that if a lender uses a cutoff score of 670, and that's a common kind of tipping point, the group being narrowly rejected by this cutoff has a bad rate of just 5%, which means that of all the applicants in the 651 to 670 pool being declined by the lender, 95% of them would most likely not default. So what some lenders will take as too low a credit score, your client could be one of the 95% that would totally succeed with that loan, even though they get denied by the lender because of that credit score. So I'd like to read just a little more from this Oliver Wyman study because it's so important. With traditional credit scores, you have to throw out a lot of likely goods in order to limit the number of bads you let in. Among the marginal turndowns, there are many more goods than bads, like we saw on the last slide. 95 out of 100 are going to be goods. They just can't be distinguished using current scores based on current data sources and methodologies. So one of the things you find with credit reports and credit scores is most institutions have sort of locked down on a number, thinking that there's a huge difference between the 640 person and the 670 person, when in fact, they might be quite similar. And there's just this barrier there based on institutional practice over time. Certain businesses just may not have that data the way lenders want to see it, even if they are loan ready and could successfully pay back a loan. So for example, even some underbanked or thin credit file clients might have been running a business successfully for many years, yet for some reason they haven't stepped into lending, they haven't stepped into banking, and they kind of show up as an invisible when you pull their credit report. They may have a surefire opportunity to grow their business but can't demonstrate it. Maybe it's not exactly in a contractual form or some other form that gives a lender the assurance they need to extend a loan. Maybe they've done significant research on their project and they really know what they're talking about, but if they're in a startup mode or are lacking some other kind of documentation, again, they just can't make the case in a way a lender is comfortable seeing it. So there are many cases where your clients might be loan ready but simply not qualify for a loan. You want to do this initial assessment to say, especially if it doesn't look like a slam dunk, if it doesn't look like they've got all this documentation and good credit scores and all these things we've been talking about, if they're lacking that, then the next kind of your analysis would be, are they truly not loan ready or is it just they're loan ready but not qualified? So what does a not ready client mean? They haven't had any business ownership experience. They don't have any records of being profitable. Maybe they've been operating at a loss. They have real issues on their credit report that has to be addressed. They haven't done enough research on whatever their project or business idea is. Those folks in that category need some coaching and training to improve their situation because they really aren't loan ready. But for the folks in the second category who are loan ready, but just are missing pieces that a lender requires in order to get to yes, that's when you start strategizing, like, can we find a mission-based lender who's willing to look beyond a thin credit file or was willing to use projections in order to make their decision? And that's where you kind of build up a case to somebody who's willing to look outside a very strict credit box to say, hey, look, I know there's some things that are hard to demonstrate a little bit with this client, but let me paint a picture about why this client actually is ready for a loan. 
And I think some of the information we've given you on the five C's in this series will help you address those areas in a way that a lender would appreciate and understand. So I think it's important, whether you're a business development person watching this or even one of the small business lenders, that we not lump all the clients together in the same pot and do this differentiation between the truly not ready and those who just are struggling to qualify but are ready. And we want to recognize that there are real structural inequalities in our financial system and in many ways our economic system that have put some people who are truly ready for an opportunity and ready for capital, but have a hard time demonstrating it, this history and systems of inequality have put them behind the starting line in ways that are unfair. So it's a challenge for all of us to see through this and not just put on a conventional lender's hat and see through some of these systems of inequality and see what's behind the scenes so we can help those clients better prepare and get a yes from a lender. And there'll be more uh, suggestions on how to find some of these clients' capital in module 10. So just to encourage you to look for some of these alternative lenders and give you a small sample of a few that I've worked with that really do step outside the conventional orientation towards credit and are willing to lend to people who conventional lenders might say are not loan ready. The first one I mentioned here is Mission Asset Fund. It's a nonprofit organization that offers financial stability to low income families by facilitating zero interest lending and simultaneous credit building. Anybody can step in often and get capital at Mission Assets Funds based on their model. Inclusive Action for the City is, runs out of LA and they run a loan fund to support business owners who cannot secure capital from traditional lenders yet require support growing or formalizing their business. They are willing very much to step out of a traditional credit box and extend credit to those who are left out but are ready for an opportunity and manage the loan just fine. The third example I have is Feed the Hunger Foundation, which works with many different types of food-related businesses and food entrepreneurs. They look sort of past those conventional norms and are willing to lend money to people that don't normally look loan ready to a conventional lender. So there's hundreds of CDFIs like this out in our country. And I suggest you use the methods I talk about in module one to help you find the CDFIs and the mission-based lenders in your area that work as some of these organizations do. So that concludes our module on looking at the difference between being loan ready and being not qualified. And I look forward to seeing you at the next module, which is giving you information about how you can help your clients improve their credit. 